Hi, everybody, and welcome to Cold Reads, uh, presented by Resident Moon Audiobook Solution. I am Laura Nicole, the host and owner of Resident Moon, and I'm very excited to be back. Uh, it's been two weeks, and we've got another great short story for you. Um, it was really great to get back into the swing of things, but I think two weeks is a good uh, buffer for um, uh, for for this show and thank you all so much for um, For subscribing and joining us this week We are going to be doing a short story that was submitted by a very familiar face and voice um, And I am going to introduce our author this week Paul K. Ellis. Hi, Paul. Hi. Hey, everybody So tell us who you are and what you do uh, well, I'm Paul Ellis. I'm a author, podcaster uh, at night when I'm wearing the tights and cape. Uh, during the day, I'm a, a application. Uh, well, no, actually, I'm not anymore. I'm an operational developer for the United Network for Organ Sharing. So they're the transplant people. When you hear uh, programs like Gray's Anatomy talk about people being on the waiting list, we're the guys that do the list. So it's uh, it's very rewarding work. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for uh, this submission. Uh, it is going to be kind of creepy, which is great for getting in the mood for Halloween. Um, and the second voice that I have on is another returning voice, the wonderful and fabulous John Roberts. Hi. Hi. Who are you and what do you do? I, uh, my name is Genre. I am the, uh, programming director and on the board of directors at Valley Fear Radio, um, valleyfearradio.org. I also um, do <laughs> a few podcasts. Uh, I do a, a radio show called Press Start to Continue where I play nerdcore and uh, video game remixes. I also um, do a political show and you can find all the stuff I do at planetside.pro. Awesome. Thank you so much. And new to the show, and I am a huge fan of her work, um, Katie, who is uh, who is part or who is the YouTuber known as Gilder Thalen. Welcome to Cold Reads. Hello. Thank you for the introduction. <laughs> Absolutely. So tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Katie. Uh, by day, I'm kind of boring. I'm just a therapist. And then by night, I am a shitty YouTuber that talks only about Dragon Age because I'm a giant dork. Oh, my God. You are in good company, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to wear my Morrigan hood, but then I decided hey. against it. Hey, that's you're, okay. You're on a show with someone that has that plays video game remix music. You're definitely in good company. <laughs> At least I'm not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. Um, I'm so excited to have everybody here. Um, so, Paul, I'm going to hand the floor to you. Give us a little preface about your story. Uh, well, now that I know I've got a therapist who's going to be reading it, I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I only work with couples. <laughs> oh, <that's all> right. <laughs> Actually, this, this story started off as a Chuck Wendig thousand-word uh piece of flash fiction um and it kind of kind of it reminds me of the robert louis stevenson story where he, he said he wrote dr jekyll and mr hyde and he gave it to his wife and it frightened her so much he, he threw it in the fire that, that, that my wife read that she looked at me and she goes you are so disturbed so um it it i got the initial idea when we were coming out of a sam's club and we were almost assaulted by girl scouts selling cookies uh, I'm, I'm a soft touch for those type of things anyway, the cookies, the Boy Scouts with the peanuts, you know, and the whole nine yards, but it becomes very expensive and they become a little entitled. You know, you you, you leave the store and they're like, you've got to buy this or we won't let you leave. Um, and so that's kind of the the impetus for this story. Um, and part of it was, was uh, well, I think you'll when you get into it, you'll see that it's all about reclaiming your 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 power too. So there's a little bit of that in there. Uh, and well, I don't want to give too much away because once you do that, then I don't know whether I've got a good message out or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and real quick, um, can you once again? There is uh, the name of the main character in this is Albert. Say the last name again. Portena. You got it, Katie? I think so. 
we're gonna try and if if anybody is Finnish or or of any Scandinavian uh, country and I'm so sorry you're gonna I'm very butcher sorry. so is my accent is very southern I'm so sorry guys yeah so we don't claim to this is this is a cold read <laughs> we are gonna mess up we are gonna mispronounce things and we're just gonna keep going that's how we roll so <laughs> for this um for the story, I am going to be reading uh, as the narrator. Genre, you are going to be playing the part of Albert uh, in blue. And Katie, I am going to have you read the part of the little girl in pink. All right. I know, very gendery. <laughs> Sorry. I, no, nothing wrong. People like it me. makes it. It makes it. It makes it very defined. Anyway, um, so Maybe. with. <laughs> Quit it. <laughs> Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and, as always, share the script so that everybody can see. And um, we now present to you Cookies by Paul K. Ellis. Mister, I'm telling you, these are your cookies. The little girl's voice, shrill and piercing, cut through Albert's head like a bandsaw. He was decidedly unwell and had been that way since he stopped and had been had that way since he staggered out of bed this morning. His body hurt from the medication and his eyes from the unrelenting bright sunlight. The mon this little monster had roused him from a mid-morning recovery siesta on the couch. Each time she pounded on the front door, he felt clubbed in the on the head. No, young lady, he sighed, pinching the bridge of his nose with his thumb and forefinger. They're not my cookies. I didn't order any. He leaned against the front door frame and could feel the terry cloth begin to rub a patch on his shoulder raw. He was on a self-imposed strict diet. No sweets, no sense getting into trouble, especially this morning with his stomach threatening to revolt. The Wayne girl stood, unwavering on his front step, almost mocking his resolve. The blonde stringy hair framed her, a narrow, thin face, a part, a porcelain, excuse me, I'm having issues again. A porcelain face. Pale, blue eyes sunk into the dark circles beneath them. My goodness. Possibly losing sleep over these deliveries, he spitefully mused. Her scout uniform was a bit drabber than he remembered from last year. He had been ambushed by an assortment of brightly uniformed young ladies as he'd left the grocery store. But the way they flash, but the way they fashion changes these days, it'd probably be different, a different color next year, he was sure. She seemed oddly familiar, but he couldn't place her. If you'd seen one, you'd seen them all. Her sash did, ha did have several rows of merit badges. They seemed to blur together, but two stood out. One badge looked like one one of the winged ponies that were so popular with her age group. The other, a stylized sphere. Her tiny form blocked the path to his walkway. She looked up at him, though through brittle lashes. One little hand was poised on her cocked hip, stretching stretching her top tight. The other hand thrust forward, holding a box of devil's food cookies. Some vile concoction made with overly thinned milk chocolate, watery shredded coconut, and cinnamon. The smell was sharp with sugar. The sight made his mouth, 
mouth and voluntarily water. Look, mister, I'm not just giving these away. This box is yours. Albert rubbed his face and sighed. His sour belly gurgled at him, sharp pains almost causing him to double over. It must be gas. He really didn't want any cookies. They weren't good for him. He was having a hard enough time with his issues as it was. With his doctor, with his doctor constantly warning him about his predilection for sweets, he didn't need to eat an entire box of cookies. Even the micro-sized kinds, the Girl Scouts were offering nowadays. Once he started, he knew he wouldn't have the self-control to stop. Besides, the medication had caused him to all but lose his taste for confections of all sorts anyway. Mr. Cortagna, she insisted, his Norwegian surname rolling off her tongue like she was born to the language. I can't leave until I deliver these cookies. There was something so oddly familiar about her at the grocery store. Yes, he definitely had seen her there. Now, where were the others? Young lady, surely you're not, you're not here by yourself. My troop's here somewhere. She said, gesturing at the empty cul-de-sac behind her. I see. Albert said. And how many are in your little troop? Eleven, she replied. Twelve, counting me, the Caithness Weavers. Well, we must count you then, after all. Albert said with some asperity. Asperity. The level of detail she gave was either too little or way too much. Did your parent bring you? Where are they? The girl frowned a little, a wisp, tucked a wisp of long blonde hair behind her ear, bit her lip, and tempted him with the box, shaking it at him. He tried again. How about your troop leader? Where is she? Mrs. Frey? Oh, she's around. The little girl replied. Now, mister, you need to take these cookies. Her insistence caused her forehead to wrinkle, her eyes hooded with intensity. It seemed the only way he was going to get rid of her was to eat her cookies. Fine. He had been patient. He told her he didn't want them, but she insisted. She wanted him to have them. And he really had been good about the whole thing. Clearly, he owed himself a treat. All right, young lady. He said, drawing himself up, tightening his robe. He tried to ignore the twinges in his middle and turned upwards towards the kitchen back in the back of the house. He had a very sharp knife there, perfect for cutting cookies. If you'll come with me, I'll see to it that you are paid. Albert had only taken a couple of steps when he noticed he wasn't being followed. He turned back toward the door in annoyance. Now, now that he had decided he wanted her cookies, he was going to have he was going to have them, pains in his stomach or not. What is it, young lady? Albert asked with asperity. He immediately softened. <sighs> I don't even know your name. Here we are having a conversation and I keep calling you young lady. Now that won't do. That won't do at all. What is your name, lovely child? Val. She shrugged. Are you going to take these cookies or what? Well, Val, if you'll please come to the kitchen, I'll be happy to pay you. He remembered something and smiled a rick rictus smile. I think if you're quiet enough, we can even coax my new kitten Snuggles out of hiding so you can pet her. No, the girl said matter-of-factly. Your mangy old cat ran away the last time you did bad things. This isn't going to be like that. I told you, these are your cookies. You already paid for them. Look, Albert barked. I've had about enough of this. Before you showed up, I've never laid eyes on your cookies. I certainly didn't order any. I and since I and since I didn't order any, I couldn't have paid for them, could I? But 
Now that you've taunted me with your cookies, I've decided that I do want them. And since I want them, I'm going to have them. Now come in here and give them to me. As he was speaking the last, Albert took two quick steps toward Val and grabbed her arm. His pudgy hand closed around her too thin and oh so very pale limb. He could see the blue veins underneath the mottled skin. This close, she smelled sweet and a little musty. A sharp pain clawed at his belly. He missed the grab, overbalanced, and fell face first onto the floor, cracking his head on the hardwood. His insides were on fire. He could hardly draw breath. He pried one eye open. From his prone position, he could see into the kitchen. What were his house shoes doing back there? And whose feet were they on? Get up, Val said, hauling him to his feet with one hand. Go take a look. Gingerly, Albert made his way to the kitchen. There, in one corner, lay a, cr lay a crumpled and bloody Val, her throat slit. In her hand was the gore-covered screwdriver. In her hand was a gore-covered screwdriver. In the other, in the other corner lay himself, cookie-cutting knife in one hand and half a dozen holes in his middle. How? Albert began. Always grabbing first. All of them said you always grab first. So I had my screwdriver ready, but you hurt me anyway. They did let me come back to give you your cookies, though. Here. She said, opening the container that was quivering in her hand. They like devil's food, and they're real excited to me eat you. The end. Yay! Yay! <laughs> that was super creepy! Yay! <laughs> That's all around. Cool. Yeah, cookies all around or something. So, Paul, what did yes. you think? Oh, I well, I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is always uh, fun and and instructional for me to hear um, someone else read stuff that I've written so that I get their take and their particular um, insights on a character. Just mm -hmm. like uh, just like I think when when I take someone else's words and I put my own spin on those characters uh, aside from the goblin um, <laughs> it uh, I, I think that that helps too because and I, I mentioned it before what as a creator when we create something whether it's music or writing or whatever uh, that it's ours until we put it out in the world and then it becomes everyone else's which is why I was really kind of hesitant to to put any ideas about what the story was supposed to be about out there because I wanted to see what your responses to that were rather than me just tell you sit up and pontificate and tell you what I would think. <laughs> uh, that way I get an idea about how accurate I am in delivering a message if it's received the same way that I wrote it that you, you see what I'm saying right um, and yeah. so I want to switch gears a little bit because I know there were some times when I was having difficulty um, I always have technical difficulty whenever I have to flip pages for some reason on my computer. It just doesn't like doing it. But I also tripped up on a few words. Um, now, uh, Katie, with your show and your channel, you're doing a lot of reading of um, codex entries and uh, referencing uh, World of Thetas. So when you get to a point where you you trip up on your words and you make a mistake, um, what do you? What's your method? Do you clean it up or do you just leave it as is? Uh, it kind of depends. If I'm doing like a podcast and I just it goes as it goes, it it does what it does. Mm -hmm. um, if for anything else, lore videos, codex entries, I just keep redoing the paragraph I was reading until I get it perfect, which takes a while. But like I think it just sounds better than me re-editing all my crap together. Right. Um, I know that I've spoken with uh, another uh, frequent contributor to the show, Veronica Jaguer. Um, she, I, I took some of her feedback, at least for a while, and, uh, <laughs> and slowed down my reading so that I was able to read a few words ahead. Um, 
which helped. But uh, words like asperity throw me off because it's not one that I hear mm. in, in everyday life. So I, I had to infer what it meant. Um, and hope I, did, hope I said it right because there are certain words I don't say right at all. I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was right as far as I know. Yeah, it, it sounded right to me. Great. <laughs> um, so voice actors, what did you think of um of Paul's story? Do you want to go first or do you want me to? Uh you can go first. All right. Uh, I thought it was really fun. I liked the, uh, at, at first I thought this was going to go like the way too creepy portion and he was going to like do something kind of, I also have worked with some uh, kids that have gone through some really terrible experiences. So I thought my mind automatically went there and I was like, oh God, no, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> thankfully <laughs> it was, uh, which thankfully it was child murder. It's just, it's just murder. It's fine. Fine. So I, uh, I I think what tripped me up there was the lovely child. You don't really get, at least I don't really hear people saying lovely child. But again, that's just my perverted mind and how what I what I work with. Um, but other than that, like I think it it was good. Like I, I thought it was going to go one way, and then it went another, and then it went in a completely opposite direction, sort of. So yeah. I, I I had fun reading it. <laughs> you look so happy doing a lot of happy dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that. that. Whenever I can pull that off, and it doesn't happen a lot, uh, it makes me happy. <laughs> well, I'm glad to give you some joy today. <laughs> <laughs> and genre, what did you think? I it was weird, <laughs> weird story. <laughs> it's quite weird. <laughs> I didn't like. Yeah, I was reading. I was like, "What? I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's just let's just go for it." And <laughs> so, um, with cookies, a euphemism is what I wanted to know. I, now well, I want thin mints. That's all I know. <laughs> I want Samoas. Girl, get those tag along. That's what you need. Mm. <laughs> right on. I was wondering if um the the way I kind of read it, her last or second to last line, I thought like he had also like killed other kids and she's the only one that fought back and so when they say they like devil's food and they're really excited to eat you i didn't know if that was the cookies or like the other girl scouts that he had kidnapped i don't know i, I guess i inferred it was the rest of her troop uh well they're, they're it, it's, i really am fighting it into not getting into any over explanation um, all right uh with this because i will <laughs> i did spend a lot of time doing some research on this uh, yeah, he he's a pedophile, um, okay. and and that was pretty okay. much uh, the way that he's. And of course, the people that are convicted with that have to go through a, a series of chemical castrations, and all of the the meds that they take give the symptoms that he has. So oh. you know the the inability to focus, the sensitivity to light, the the skin sensitivity, all of that stuff is uh, the, the inability to digest, digest certain foods. Um, and the idea of his doctor telling him that sweets aren't good for him, well, he's referring to, to these children as his sweets. They're his confections. He's going to give himself a treat and do that sort of thing. Um, and I'll stop now because I'm really beginning. <laughs> well, you know, and that's – and does that come from your experience or your knowledge from the medical – um side of your profession or is that just something that you wanted to research i don't know that i ever wanted to research anything like that. right <laughs> um, who does uh, well uh, i mean we do for theta stuff but that's beside the point you're clearly on the well, list i just yeah. want to we we all know that you're on the list now <laughs> <laughs> clearly my browsing history is that much is certain yeah, well, yeah. uh Actually, what I was looking for is something that was just that started off innocuous, but turned out to be really, 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 really uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And that what's the thing that makes me the most uncomfortable as the father of three daughters. Mm -hmm. This type of situation makes me the most uncomfortable. Um, mm -hmm. And so that a lot of that was me working out my own angst as a parent. You know, what would happen in a situation like this type of thing? I'm not really sure what that says about me as a parent, but but I'm going to put that <laughs> You arm your daughters with screwdrivers that are extra sharp. <laughs> All right. This is interesting for me because, like, I uh, unfortunately I have worked on the other side of the the survivors, and, and I've met with them and talked with them and did therapy with them, and that's it's 
it, it, I guess it's never a comfortable thing to like, it, you never get used to walking in there with a, a child abuse uh, survivor victim, whatever you want to say, like, it's always shitty. Like no matter how many years you work for it, work with those type of um, things, you always have to just take a minute afterwards and just kind of collect yourself. Cause it's always heartbreaking and it always sucks. Yeah. yeah. So. I uh, honestly thought I like, from the beginning the the only thing i thought was he's he's totally dead right now he and that's that's the devil that is totally <laughs> the devil he is about to kill the, kill that girl and then she's going to be like ha gotcha and then he gets the devil's food meaning <laughs> he gets eaten by devils <laughs> that's all like <laughs> yours is way creepier <laughs> <laughs> yeah i imagine like the the girl strout troop coming in like eating him like kind of i don't know why oh man but... <laughs> cannibal girl scouts that is not a badge i ever got <laughs> <laughs> that's what the spear meant <laughs> one of the things is the Keithness weavers and all of that there's a story um and again this is the norwegian coming through uh called Njal's saga uh it takes place in scandinavia and scotland it's uh the northeasternmost part of Scotland, the one that got raided the most by the, the Vikings. Uh, and in that story, the protagonist follows 12 women into a hut. And when he goes and spies inside the hut, it's the Valkyries getting ready to choose the slain. So you've got Val, who has got 11 sisters. That's anyway, that, that was just uh... something. So am I the only one who heard Neal and immediately thought of Dragon Age Origins? <laughs> a. A. <laughs> My people. Um, yeah. What, what? Okay, so um, we have unfortunately come to the conclusion of Cold Reads. So I do want to give everybody the opportunity to um, pimp their stuff. And uh, so we are again going to start with, um, with Paul. Um, what are your projects and where can people find you online? You can find me online at www.wirelessadventures.com. Um, it's, it's interesting. I have just updated the site. It's got a new look. So when you go out there and find errors, let me know so I can correct them. Um, I've got a new project coming up at the beginning of November uh, for NADPOD POMO, National Podcast Post Month. So it's 30 days of post. I'm going to be doing Tales from Edgar Allan Poe. We're kicking off with the gold bug. So uh, you can go out to wirelessadventures.com beginning in November and download the uh, an episode a day. It's fantastic. Um, and if you send me the link, I will put it in the show notes along with everything else. All right. Genre. That's me. What are you up to and where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, let's see. I am, like I said, primarily, I do a radio show every week. Uh, it is Press Start to Continue. I play video game remixes and nerdcore hip-hop and chiptunes. And sometimes I'm really lucky to get to interview um, someone in the industry uh, or a rapper. Um, I also uh, run sound for, a, for Civil Politics, which is a political discussion show where we're not jerks to each other. Uh, and... A couple other things too. If you go to planetside.pro, um, planets, I named just all the stuff I do, just gather them for warmth, play, <laughs> planet side productions, <laughs> then um, then you can see uh, the other stuff that I that I produce or act in. Yes, like the TSR network, the TSN Fleet, network, the Fleet News Service, the Fleet TSN. News Service. Yes, because <laughs> um, you know. Uh, it's good. Oh yeah. And then oh, once, and it's, uh, uh, at press start VFR on Twitter. Yeah. And Katie, where can, uh, what projects are you working on and where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find my YouTube channel, Gilder Thalen, on YouTube. Um, it's kind of hard to spell, so good luck with that. Um, you can... The links are in the show notes, folks. Links are in the show notes. Um, <laughs> I talk about Dragon Age lore every Thursday. I actually need to upload a video right after this. 
Um, and I read Codex Entries on Saturday. And uh, once a month, I have a podcast with Jordan from the Exalted March and called Split the Veil. And we just kind of talk some shit. Uh, we had to skip this week because he was moving. But hopefully next, uh, we're supposed to be recording soon to get next month out. Um, you can also find me on Twitter at Thalen, And you can also find me on Reddit, uh, username uh, Gillanon. So hit me up if you want some lore theories. If you know anything about Dragon Age, anyone watching this, have fun. But, yeah. And you can find this show also on um, uh, here on YouTube. Uh, you, uh, I am Laura Nicole, the host and owner of Resident Moon. And who's listening to the show? Back. Uh, it's been two weeks, and we've got another great short story for you. Um, all right, I'm taking out my earphones because I'm hearing a lot of crosstalk. So, anyway, um, <laughs> if you want to find out more about. Uh, cold reads and resident moon and everything that i am doing um you can go to resonantmoon.com where i do audio um i do audio everything i review audiobooks i produce audiobooks i do some narration um just not right now and i edit podcasts and audiobooks i think i said that already uh, you can follow me on twitter at l nicole audio i usually talk about Dragon Age, and I talk about um, D and D, and I talk about Critical Role. It's Thursday. I am not caught up, so I'm going to be catching up on Critical Role. Um, what else? Uh, we have a Facebook group, which you are more than welcome to join. Um, follow us on Facebook uh, at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cold reads. Um, if you would like to be on Cold Reads, um, you can send me an email, um, lauranicoleaudio at gmail.com. We are accepting submissions for short stories, and I love to have new voices on the show. Um, next week, we are going to have both a new, uh, a new voice, um, which was helpfully um, sent to us by... Uh, genre. So thank you, genre. Um, and what else? Um, this story is going to be by Scott Roche, which I'm excited about um, because it was a challenge that I gave him specifically for this show. It's going to be D and D related. So <laughs> it's the things I love. Um, <laughs> Let's see, is there anything else that I can think of? Oh, right. This show is covered under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. What that means is that you can download this show, you can share it, you can retweet it, you can post it. Just don't edit it. It's perfect the way it is. Um, and so are you. Really? Okay, that's it. Um, and then... Go ahead and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. We're going to have uh, lots of new stories coming out um, every two weeks. So we will be back on October 26th. Thanks again to my amazing cast and our wonderful author uh, for joining me this week. And until next time, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Dara Shiral. <laughs> Dara Shiral. <laughs> and bye, everybody. We'll see you soon.